what is your utopia or what do you think um, yeah have you heard of david pierce's hedonistic imperative you've had a uh i um I, I don't remember if I've heard of it. Uh, can, you, can you just briefly explain oh, for me what it is? Like engineering um, civilization and even biology to mm -hmm. phase out unnecessary suffering um, and I guess promote well-being mm. and increase happiness. Basically. Yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> I'm all for that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, I do tend to be pretty anti-suffering. Mm. Yeah, well, explain, like, what is it? Uh, okay, I mean, it's obvious to some people, but it's not necessarily obvious to others. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, there, there, there is this notion of, of noble suffering, right? Or, you know, there is, you know, there are arguments that, well, maybe some people, you know, uh, only, you know, came up with great creative works or great art in the crucible of suffering. Or maybe people, you know, discovered deeper meaning in their lives by suffering, right? But then it's like, okay, come on, you know, here's this uh, child. Are you going to, like, hit them with a baseball bat because their suffering will, will ennoble them? Them. It's like, come on, you know, give me a break, right? Uh, the fact that suffering can sometimes be ennobling does not mean that we should inflict it uh, when we can avoid doing that, uh, nor does it mean that we should, uh, uh, you know, f avoid uh, alleviating it when it's uh, in our power to do so. And I would take these as just pretty obvious axioms for any moral system, right? If uh, any moral system disagrees with that, I would say so much the worse for that system. What about the value of novelty? Um, is that something that we should value in the long term? I mean, um, we could create a, a civilization mm -hmm. that just optimizes for pure bliss mm. um, and just turns everybody or every every um, conscious thing mm -hmm. into just like a, you know, a, a, a yeah. book sock. Yeah, well, I think that I, uh, like many other people, like uh, like a universe that's tiled with rats, like hooked up to a heroin drip, you know, does not seem like my vision of the ideal future. Uh, you know, and it can be kind of a little bit challenging to articulate why not, right? Uh, you know, is that not just maximizing the total amount of bliss, but... Uh, um, I think, uh, uh, again, if a, if a moral theory is going to lead to the conclusion that, you know, uh, 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 a trillion rats with heroin is the best possible state of the world, I'm probably going to say that that's not the moral theory for me, that I'm going to keep looking for a better one, uh, one that sort of leads to a more interesting future, hopefully also a relatively happy future, but um, yeah. <laughs> Did you write anything about like a, you know um, the, the valuable novelty versus invaluable novelty, like the fuzz on a TV screen with no um, meaning or significance compared to you know vistas of, of unique and, and valuable experience? Um, well, okay. Well, I, I did sort of touch on that distinction in my Ghost in the Quantum Turing Machine essay, right? Where uh, it was important to me there to like. Uh, um, invoke this concept of nighty and uncertainty, which is uncertainty that we, uh, in some sense, is so radically uncertain that we don't even know how to quantify it using a probability distribution. Or, you know, maybe we can try to, but one person's distribution will disagree with another one's with apparently no way for them to come to agreement. Uh, so, th so that's what people mean by this term, nighty and uncertainty. And, like, it's like when people talk about free will, for example, to me it's always seemed like intuitively that must be what they uh, are trying to get at, even if they don't say that. Okay, because, you know, uh, like, so, so when, when quantum mechanics was first discovered in the 1920s, people said, ah, well, quantum indeterminacy must be the thing that underlies free will. But I think when people got to understand quantum mechanics a little bit better, they realized, well, like, like a radioactive atom, you may not be able to predict exactly when it will decay, but if you have a whole population of these atoms, you know exactly what fraction of them will decay, you know, in, in such and such amount of time. And, and actually, it seems no, no less mechanistic than, than a deterministic system was, right? It's just a, uh, a fully mechanistic and also probabilistic system. 
right? One where the, the law, you know, it is fully governed by laws, by simple laws that we can understand from the outside. And they happen to involve probabilities. And, and my intuition is that that kind of thing, which would also include a roulette wheel or would include the static on your TV screen, that these sorts of things are somehow no more intuitively associated with free will than our fully deterministic systems. That somehow, you know, in order for us to use a term like free will, we want something more interesting than that. And to me, that could only possibly mean that there is naive uncertainty.